And Mary, I wanted to ask you, so that's, that's really important because you, let's say, take Packing for Mars. There are so many, there's so much history with the space program in America. There are so many different uh, tacks you could take with the topic, but it seems like, from what you just said, is the way you approach it is, what as a reader would I find interesting yeah. to know? Like, I think the whole section on vomiting in space, which is un an unfortunate result of <laughs> the motion sickness, which I'm sure if a lot of people think about this, the, 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 what do we call it? Not the spaceship, but um, whatever is being launched into space and then comes back, you wouldn't necessarily think of that little, very human detail that can make their lives a misery, but NASA's all over it, researching yep. it. Um, so it, it, you're kind of thinking like maybe the normal reader, stuff that the normal reader would be curious about or would want to know or you wanted to right. know more about? Right. Um, I write very much the books that I would have wanted to read. Mm -hmm. and, and, with, and it was kind of amazing to me with, this, with the space program that there wasn't such a book. There's a lot of astronaut memoirs which are fascinating and kind of compelling and dramatic at times, but there really wasn't the, the book that I would have wanted to check out of the library. So I thought, all right, I'll write it. <laughs> right. right, and I think um, there isn't like one dud chapter and every single time you turn the page you're thinking, oh no, what's she going to tell us about next? Oh no, and there is this kind of... But, the, the detail, I think, is kind of important because, you know, if there wasn't enough detail, it would be just simple absurdity or humor. And if there was any more detail, it would be totally bogged down and really serious. But you seem to manage to hit that sweet spot of, I did want to know more about the throw up. I don't know why, but I just got to a point. I thought, <laughs> yeah, why do? And dogs do get motion sick. And why is it that rabbits don't? I mean, all of that stuff yeah. just kind of comes to life. Yeah, I have a... Uh... I think it's, I, I, part of it is insecurity as a writer. I think I'm always expecting the, the reader to set down the book at any moment. Oh, this is getting a little boring. No, wait, 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 don't go away. I got something else for you. Come back. So I, I think it's that fear. Because there's so many books I pick up and I think, wow, this is going to be really interesting. And then I find myself going, oh, okay, maybe not for 200 pages though. And I put it down. And I, like, I have this fear of people putting down the book. So I'm like, and also, it's it's fun for me to write that way, so I, it keeps me entertained too. Right. Okay. So you're gonna you're you're thinking. Okay, I'm I'm going to do the space program, and I'm going to do these few aspects of the space program. How do you start that research? And then is the immersion is obviously just one part of it. But what are some of the other right. aspects of being able to research a book like this? Well, there's a tremendous amount of time spent uh, getting up to speed because I start from the point of an absolute idiot, I, I, ignoramus. I don't. I really have not followed the space program. I never even read the right stuff. Right. So there's this. There was this many months of uh, trying to get myself up to speed with the his because I cover some history too, and I'm looking for those aspects in the history, like you know the Enos, the chimp. I wanted to cover not Ham, but the second space chimp. Yeah. So just trying to get the lay of the land takes me a while. And then it's a, a process of um, becoming a pest and writing to people in the space program, people who are contractors, people doing research. Hi, I am a science writer and an author, and I wondered, what do you have going on, and can I come to your lab, and what's going to be happening? So a lot of that. And, uh, you know, with NASA, there were some you know, folks who were a little uncomfortable or uh, – had to run it through the appropriate channels and the appropriate channels were you know usually tried to help but sometimes just uh, for various reasons yeah. would say no yeah. so it's like okay I'd have to go kind of go around them or or find someone else so a lot of time is spent doing that getting the pieces I'm you know get assembling my pile of sticks that I'll then build something with the getting the pile of sticks is the hard part for me yeah Mira do you ever get kind of discouraged like you think it's going to be a great topic and then you delve into it and you're like oh my god I'm never going to be able to make a book out of this every time oh really <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I, I, there's I, I forget that it happens every time like but this last time there was this point where I'm like collapsed on the sofa crying and I, I was like, I can't do it. I give up. I can't get act two things had fallen apart. The Japanese trip, they'd withdrawn their permission. Um, the, the cadaver chapter, well, was, uh, they I, said yeah. that, well, first they'd said yes, and then they said no. So, and then I had to, I mean, both of those 
I ended up getting them back on track. But there was this point where I'm like, I give up. I just give up. And I'm, my husband's saying, if you'll recall, you have been through this on every book. This happens every time. I'm like, no, but this is different. So, um, yeah, it is. I, it is. Uh, uh, I get discouraged. It's usually uh, about two thirds of the way through, mm-hmm. and I think I, yeah. I'm not getting what I need. Right. This isn't good enough. Whatever. But it all works out. It does. And, you know, Mary, that was interesting, and I'm glad that you put it in the book, that NASA, it took you months, right, to get that, to, to get clearance from NASA to get into the tests with the yes. cadaver. And could you tell the viewers just a little bit about that chapter and, and, and what they actually do? Oh, sure, yeah. This is a chapter about it. Was It's essentially a crash test of a capsule. It's the Orion capsule and this is the capsule that they were going to be using it to go back to the moon but now it looks like we're not going to the moon so they're using it as an emergency escape vehicle from the space station and a space capsule doesn't have landing gear it just kind of comes down it falls out of space and parachute opens and it's landing on the ocean so uh, the ocean is unpredictable you don't know which way the forces are going to come the thing could get flipped over it could fall it could hit sideways so they were they had a setup at the uh, Transportation Research Center in Ohio, near Ohio State, and they were where they could put a, um, a cadaver in a simulated spacesuit, and that's quite an undertaking to dress a cadaver in a spacesuit. Um, and then the, the, once he's wearing the, the simulation, it's just the hard parts of the suit, and then you get him into the space, the seat. That it's a it's a mock up of the actual seat that the um, astronauts will be in, and then they apply this. It's just like a hydraulic blast of air that makes it, you know, the force that would mimic the crash. And then they'll do an autopsy, say, like on the shoulder, to see, you know, is that would that have broken the arm, or would it have been a minor injury, or what's going on here? So um, that's, what, that's what they were up to. Hmm. I think it's interesting, too, that they, <laughs> they used to use real people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, that, that was, was amazing. I couldn't believe that, and that they and that they survived, and that really they have kind of minimal old age injuries from having gone through some of. Those. Oh, yeah, there were uh, for the Apollo landings, which again were coming down on water. They would pay um, guys out at the Air Force Base. They give them um, extra hazard duty pay, and it was actually a substantial bump in their salary so there was a long le- waiting list of people who wanted to go on and it was you got slammed pretty hard and some of them ended up with you know some minor medical issues yeah. uh, there was another there was at one point one of the companies was paying bums <laughs> like, like getting people off the street oh and God. paying them which was a little yeah yeah you know, a, a little out there and this was the 60s and you know before uh, political correctness uh, took took hold right. <laughs> um I'm trying to figure out too, Mary. Um, if as you were doing the research, um, do you do you kind of suspend your own opinion about what's going on? Is important to be uh, not politically cor- correct, but to just kind of go forth and just say, "Well, this is the way NASA does it," or "This is the way the Body Farm does this sort of stuff." Or are you kind of gathering an opinion about some of these things you observe as you go forward? Um, I'm I. I am, you know, I'm not, I, I, my books are not really advocacy books. I'm not, I'm not really, like, proactive in trying to push people toward one opinion or the other. Well, oh, that's not true. Stiff, I really did come down fairly strongly on the side of, of at least organ donation, if not um, whole body donation. Um, and I do end up taking a, taking a stance, but they're not, I'm not trying to, the point is to, entertain people and educate them and if they end up on one side of the fence or another that I don't it doesn't matter to me where they land as long as they learn something so that's not a big a big part of the book although I do uh, yeah you can't help but have an opinion when you uh, when you're reporting on on stuff like this and and they're like for example in stiff the I think the only the only there was only one project where I really felt that it was an inappropriate uh, use of bodies and uh, so you know that comes through yeah. Oh, right. Right. So you just kind of let the writing stand as you're preparing the chapter. It's just whatever you felt at the time from having observed and lived through some of the stuff. You just kind of yeah. let it just stand in the book. Yeah. What yeah. You- without really stating an opinion, just it, I think it comes through, and it, it's not hard to tell how I feel about it. Right. 
and what would you say as you, I'm sure each book you've done, uh, you could probably think off the top of your head the most memorable insight you had or what was most memorable about preparing the book. But for pa in Packing for Mars, what would you say is the thing that most surprised you or shocked you or otherwise just kind of threw you? Well, for Packing, Packing for Mars, I, it was um, partly because I knew so little about the topic. I was just blown away by the extent to which the lack of gravity affects everything. everything every part of the human body and anything you would try to put up in space that's made on Earth doesn't work. I mean, a match, a fuse, a stomach, a penis, I don't care what it is. <laughs> It doesn't work the same. And that's why NASA is so expensive. That's why people go, whoa, it's a $5,000 toilet or whatever it is. Um, it's a lot more than that. But I can explain to you why it costs that much. And everything has to be tested in zero gravity, which means hauling it over to Ellington Field and putting it on one of those parabolic flights and, and putting it in zero gravity to see if it works. So not just the designing, but the testing uh, is incredibly time consuming and it, it employs tons of engineers. So. Uh, it was a real eye-opener to me, just how you have to rethink everything. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and keeping that in mind, you know, you know about how you, there's so much involved in getting us to space. And now with President Obama talking about, you know, I'm not even really sure, not totally dismantling NASA, but maybe shifting its mission a little bit. Yeah. Can you tell us a little about that? And then what, is your, what are your thoughts on yeah. that after researching the book? Sure. Well, it was kind of an abrupt... Uh, you know, I, I spent a couple years on this book, and some of the things I covered had to do with going back to the moon and building a moon base, which would have almost been like, you know, colonizing the moon. It would have been a permanent presence. And that has been scrapped. So that was a, that's a major change. All these hundreds of people and, and years of work that have gone into the habitats, the rovers, the suits, the moon dust mitigation, the, uh, the science. I mean, just so much was put into it. And then it's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> We're not going to the moon. But the, NASA has to deal with this. Every time there's a shift in administration, they change the vision. The vision. So now we have no, we're visionless. We're, well, there's talk of, okay, maybe near Earth asteroid and then on to Mars. But right now the budget hasn't been approved. There's still this partisan bickering going on. It's going to go on through spring, I'm sure. And so right now, uh, people at NASA are uh, just bracing for who knows what. Yeah. And I think it's a, um, you know, to me, it would be if it, it, to, to end manned ex space exploration here would be uh, it would be really sad, given that every program has really been preparing for the next phase. Mm -hmm. You know, you had Gemini was a dress rehearsal basically for Apollo, and then the space program, you know, the space station has been ten years of essentially a, like learning how to cooperate globally in space. It's an international space cooperative mission, and they, the whole idea was figuring out Mars, but how will we get groups, you know, different nations together, deal with long-term problems like bone loss and radiation and all that stuff. And what was the point of all that, you know, from now we're not going, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, hopefully it'll be back on track, you know. Yeah, and I just wonder if, if the idea of colonizing space or whatever we want to say is getting increasingly more important. I'm not saying trash Earth and then let's just go to another planet and leave it behind. Right. But but now that we're having so many yeah. of these big global issues, I'm just wondering if maybe it isn't increasingly important to look into right. how to survive on other right. planets rather than less. Yeah, and the other thing is that the things that you learn when you figure out how to get to Mars, we're talking about extreme recycling, you know, drinking urine and sweat and um, using, reusing everything you have. And that mindset is growing, you know, more and more uh, appropriate and uh applicable so is in a way astronauts are kind of these poster children for sustainability and uh, a Mars mission you'd be you really would the technology that would come out of it I think would be especially appropriate now it reminds me of wartime when you've got things like transistor radios that come out of that and then yes. you think about Tang on a light note but I mean I'm sure there are a lot of things that come out of space research that it would be kind of sad that that innovation would kind of die down a bit oh yeah I mean anything that's um, Lightweight, automated, cordless, fireproof, uh, stuff like high-speed wireless data transfer, automated insulin pumps. I mean, it's an unbelievable the technology that comes out of both the space program and, alas, the military. But, yeah.